Hello, everyone. So honored to be in a room full of so much creative power and talent, and it's really a pleasure to see you all. My name is Selwa, and I'm a 2014 ISF recipient. And since receiving this support from ISF, I've worked as a producer on a digital series called The Secret Life of Muslims, which some of you may have watched. The series uses humor and empathy to subvert stereotypes or misperceptions about the American Muslim community. And since releasing its first season, it's been wildly successful. It's been nominated for an Emmy, Peabody, and most recently, the International Documentary Association Award for Best, Best Short Narrative Series. And it's also won the Goldster Prize. To me, the most important contribution this series has made is that it's created space for other like-minded creators to get involved. Working on this series for me has been eye-opening. It's a testament to the fact that there's a dearth of first and foremost storytelling in and around the Muslim community and by Muslims, but not just about Muslim issues. It's also challenged the way that I think about the way Muslims are represented in the mainstream media, but also how the way Muslims call for their own representation. It's my personal and strategic estimation, a calculation you may call, that we must look to our community when we tell stories to, to avoid being relegated to the sphere of identity politics alone and the politics of respectability. And what I mean by respectability politics is it, it's essentially referring to attempts by marginalized communities trying to police own members of their community in order to fit in with what is the normal narrative. It's therefore our task to create representation that rises to a true diversity of who we are and the authenticity of our narratives both domestically and globally. And even more critically, it's crucial that we not only cloak ourselves strictly in the veil of identity politics or humanizing narratives, because at times it, res it, it reflects an expensive opportunity cost and takes away the agency for our community to explore and convey its most poignant stories. In the next nine months, I'll be embarking on an independent short documentary that follows a Native American activist whose ancestral homelands between Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico have been degraded by the oil, coal, and uranium industries, and what the relationship between Native people or First Nations is with their land. This is more relevant even today as news comes out that the Trump administration is planning on shrinking these public lands. And for many of us, including myself, who are urban dwellers, it's very important to stay connected to these narratives that are on the periphery, and I hope that you all will join me in this effort and, and look to those communities who have been here who are indigenous to this land and have so much power of their own to share and undergo a journey with them to tell their stories. ISF's commitment to empowering authentic representation, be they journalists, filmmakers, academics, or policymakers, is vital. And I'm so so great to it's so great to see all these people who are under one roof supporting that mission. Thank you. I would now like to introduce to you the president of ISF, Dr. Hamid Razipour.